Hi, John and Nico. This is Christina from The Upcoming. It's so lovely to meet you. Would you like to share what made you want to be a part of both projects, the Endurance 22 Expedition and this film? For me, I want to be a part of it because searching for Shackleton's Endurance is the ultimate polar expedition challenge. As a polar geographer, expedition leader, uh, I've spent over 30 years working in the Arctic and the Antarctic. So for me, it was the ultimate challenge. Uh, and it was for me as well. Yeah. But for another reason, because I am subsea engineer, but uh, it's as well an ultimate challenge for the subsea, for the subsea side. Nobody got the opportunity to get this holy grail, except people who found the Titanic. Everyone was telling us it was an impossible challenge. So I think that spurred both of us on mm. uh, to develop the expedition so that we could find the endurance. And how did you know that Elizabeth and Jimmy were the right people to document this expedition? Well, I'm being honest with you, we didn't. Because when we had the, uh, the expedition, um, we had a film director on board <clears throat> called Natalie Hewitt, brilliant film director who was embedded in within the expedition team. Uh, she got some great footage, which you can see in the documentary. Um, you know, and that's not us acting, that's, you know, that's you know, live, us looking exhausted, stressed. That is how it really appeared. And the utter joy and happiness when we find the wreck, that's all real recorded at the time. So it was only once that we'd found the wreck and National Geographic had seen the beautiful footage of the ship underwater that National Geographic came in and talked to the organisers and funders of the expedition with the Falklands Maritime Heritage Trust. And the trust agreed with National Geographic that they could take the imagery. And then when Jimmy and Chai saw the imagery, they realised, well, this is such a fantastic story that they wanted to take it on as their next project. And for us, as an exhibition team, it's been a pleasure to work with them. And a new journey. Yeah, a new journey, yes. Yeah. A new amazing journey for mm. us. You know, I'm a, a polar geographer, exhibition leader, never been involved in a big, you know, massive you know, National Geographic documentary film before. Same for Nico as a yeah. subsea engineer. So this is all, you know, it's a completely new world for us. But be... A new step on this great, yeah. great journey yeah. that we made um, together. But, you know, working with Jimmy and Chai, uh, it's been a fantastic experience. They're, they are expert film storytellers. So the ability that they have to weave the original Shackleton story with our own story in 2022 is, I think, quite remarkable, the way that they've brought the movie together. It, it, and it has all sorts of different... It has a human interest, it has the road survival. The connection between the two stories. And the connection yeah. between mm -hmm. our own expedition, mm -hmm. the similarities, you know, you know you know, we fail in 2019, Shackleton fails. Uh, there are a whole host of different things that all work together in a really quite fantastic way. It's brilliant. So what was a moment from your expedition that you felt was vital to be included in the film? I thought, well, there are two, two parts which I thought were absolutely mm. vital. One was the actual discovery of the wreck, you know, where you see the footage in the operations container on the back deck, you see Robin McGinnicle seeing the wreck for the first time and his reactions, and then the reactions of me and Menson Bound, our marine archaeologist and uh, director of exploration, when Nico puts up his iPhone and sh says, gentlemen, let me show you the endurance. That was a very important part of the film that uh, I was very pleased that Natalie Hewitt filmed at the time. Not so much at the time, but now, um, when we go to South Georgia, because we find the wreck a hundred years to the day that Shackleton was buried on South Georgia. So I, I, I asked for special permission for the ship and the expedition to go into South Georgia. They normally wouldn't allow this, certainly not without like a year's preparation, permit authorize, authorization. So we're allowed to go. And it's a very moving for all the expedition team to be able to go and uh, pay, pay a tribute to Sir Ernest Shackleton, the boss at his graveside. Uh, so it was fantastic that that was recorded by Natalie and uh, you know, my short speech is, is included at the end because I think that summarises everything that we're trying to achieve. You know, it's all about the team um, and for Shackleton also, you know, his men survived because it was a team effort. We only found his ship because it was a team effort. So uh, it was lovely that those two moments were both recorded whilst we were on the expedition. And on my side is definitively the 3D images, 
the of the of the digital uh, images of the wreck because finally we can share it with a large audience we worked two additional years to make this real because it was a long processing to make this uh, absolutely um, uh, high level resolution of the wreck and uh, share it with the, with large audience and i've been at the end of the movie and to see, uh, to, to share with everybody what we saw and discover each artifact we saw on the, on the wreck. It's really a high level of pressure. And were there any moments that you were surprised were included in the final cut? In the final cut? Mm. I, think, I think that not so much a surprise in terms of our own expedition, but it's what Jimmy and Chai did with the original Shackleton story. So, you know, I've been living with this story for over 30 years, so I've read the diaries. I've seen Hurley's film South, I've seen the Hurley photographs. So for me, it was a big surprise to see um, the original Hurley film colorized for the first time, which brings in these new details and really brings the imagery to life to a new audience. I thought that was it's, fascinating. It's a new way for, for new generation. Yes. And I think it's, it's very exciting for new generation to look at this film because they have the opportunity to have a very modern way to tell this uh, polar, polar story. So, so it's the colorized footage was one, and then the second surprise for me was the use of artificial intelligence to model the voices of Shackleton and Worsley and Macklin, and you know, so that you can hear them read their diaries in their own voices. And I thought that was absolutely fascinating. You know, I've been these diaries, these historic documents exist in the archives at the Scott Polar Research Institute at the University of Cambridge. So I've actually been there and read the diaries. So to actually hear them spoken by the men in their real worlds, I thought also added a different element to the movie and made it uh, particularly dramatic and uh, much more sort of forceful in terms of the, the impact it might have. And I agree with Nico that it, it, in, it engages a new generation. You know, people who've never heard of Shackleton before can watch this movie and really think, wow, this is just incredible. The, par the parallel between the two expeditions is great. How they made it, how they mixed the two story. And they have been, able to make same level of excitement on the two expeditions, which is extremely impressive. Thank you so Thank much. You. Okay. Pleasure.